The core of every game is the characters, and besides the main character, monsters are also an essential aspect of every game. In this video, we'll be talking about how to create your monster design for 2D games, and I'll show you the steps how I created this character. Feel free to use any other drawing software you have. I'll be using Krita, which is a free drawing software, and you can download it from the, the link in the description. First, we will make a quick brainstorm and research. After that, we'll do some concepts and sketching. Our third step will be to choose and refine the design. After that, we'll choose some colors for our character. And finally, we will finish the character. Let's dive in. Before even going into designing the character, we need to think about some principles. The first one is the story. So think about the character's appearance, backstory, abilities, habitat, colors, or any other traits you want to incorporate. So if you struggle with this part, here are some ideas to help you out with your concepts. The other principle is shape language. This one plays a huge role in designing a character, and there are three main shapes, circle, square, and triangle. Shapes are telling us a story and show personality, and they determine how your character will be perceived by the audience. This is the short brief for our character, and these are some references I gathered that inspired me. You can find inspiration anywhere from your resources or simply use Google, Pinterest, or any other platform. The way to use the references is not to directly copy what you see, but get inspired by them. For example, these horns will help with the shape and lighting. Uh, these frogs are inspiration for colors, and I love this owl for its eyes. We are finished with the first step, and now let's make some sketches. So when you open Krita, you want to create a new file, so click here. Once you do that, you'll get this little window for the canvas size and resolution. I recommend this canvas size. Make sure it is set up on pixels. And resolution to 300 pixels per inch. It is always important to work at high resolution, so if you need to downscale it for your game, you won't lose the quality of the image. Next, it's important to keep RGB model, and when we click here to content, here you can set up how many layers you want your document to open with. I just keep that to two layers, and for the background, I just put light gray. Press OK and create your document. These are the brushes that I'll be using and they're original Krita brushes. So here we have a soft brush, which will help us with rendering our character. We have a hard run brush, which is really basic. This one has a slightly opacity, so it's good for some highlights. This 4B uh, brush we'll be using for the sketch part. And this one I like to use for line art later in the process. Let's sketch some character on a new layer. This stage is to explore the shapes, poses, and angles, and to get your ideas out. In that way, it will be easier for you to decide which design you want to finalize and use it in your game. You can always go back to your references or find new ones if you need to. Also, don't worry about how your lines are looking right now. We will define them later in the process. And don't go into many details at this point or spend too much time defining the character. Having a shape language principle in mind can also help you to stay on the right track. As you can see, I'm also rely on that when I'm creating these types of characters. As I said, for this video, I'm going with this one right here. And feel free to copy this design and follow along or simply go with your own design. So select your character with the selection tool and copy paste it by pressing Ctrl C then Ctrl V on your keyboard. It will automatically paste it on a new layer. To resize your character, press Ctrl T on your keyboard. And with that tool, you can increase the size of your sketch. We have chosen the design and now it's time to refine it. Before even cleaning the lines, I'm going through some parts I want to change or erase. For example, I wanted to correct the right horn, so I'm using the selection tool to select and adjust it. If you want to erase some parts and redraw them, you, you can simply press E on the keyboard, which is a shortcut for the eraser. Here I adjusted the eyes and mouth and I also erased the pupils. We are now focused only on this design, so feel free to experiment and add or delete the parts you want. Another important thing is to check on yourself and see how the character looks flipped on the other side. If you want to do that, press M on the keyboard and the canvas will automatically flip. This is important for two reasons. First is to refresh your eyes and see it from the other angle. It's easier to spot mistakes. And second, if you're creating your character for a platformer game, it should be designed in an idle pose at 45 degrees. This way the character gets a more three-dimensional feel and you know in which direction is headed. 
Now it's time to clean those lines. First, lower the opacity of a sketch layer to 30%, then make a new layer above it. I'm using the ink brush for the lines and going over and redrawing the sketch. The final design may look slightly different from the sketch, which is totally fine. You can see me redraw the same parts a few times until I was satisfied with the look. With that being said, we are moving on to the next step. The next step is choosing colors. So for example, different colors bring different moods and that can play a key role in your character's personality. Another important factor is color contrasts and combinations. Simply choosing the right colors adds up to your design. I made three color variations and for this design I'm going with the one in the middle. These colors go well with the character's brief and the concept and the red describes the character's personality better than purple and blue. So I have this little thumbnail for colors right here. What I'm going to do is to create a new layer underneath the final sketch layer. For the coloring part I'm going with hard run brush right here. I'm going to increase the size of the brush and color pick the red color by pressing control on the keyboard. Now we can name this layer body layer because we are going to repeat the same process for each part of the character. So we're going to create a new layer. We can name it horns. And now we're going to color pick the orange color and color the horn separately from the body. And now let's repeat the same process for the eyes, eyebrows, legs and tail. Make sure to paint everything on a separate layers and rename them because it will be way easier to navigate through the layers. And the second reason why everything is separated because this way we are also preparing this design for future animation. Our next step is to create clipping masks for each part of the body. To do that in Krita we need to group layers. So create a new layer above the body layer right here. By holding shift on your keyboard, select those two layers and then control G to group it all together. To create a clipping mask, press this little icon right here. So this allows us to only paint inside the base shape that we applied the mask. This can help us later in the process when we'll have more layers on top of each other to really separate them if we needed to or correct or add, erase, whatever. Okay, so create two layers, actually, we need two layers. First one, let's rename it to shadows. And the other one, let's rename to highlights. I will repeat the same process for the rest of the character. So we have everything clipped together and grouped. Let me quickly show you how you can easily adjust the colors or change them. Press Ctrl U on the keyboard. You'll get this little window where you can change the hue, saturation and lightness of the layer. Make sure to check this box that says colorize and now experiment and see what you can do with these options. With this option, I adjusted the color of the line art. Now it's time to paint some shadows and highlights. So go back to the body group, so go to the shadow layer, select airbrush. Let's assume that the light is coming from the top right corner right here. And based on that, let's place some shadows and highlights. Color pick the color red right here, go slightly to the darker shade of red and simply place shadows on this part of the character. You can always color pick the base color and slightly blend it something like this. Let's go to the highlights layer, again color pick the base color and slightly go to the lighter shades and what I like to do is also go a little bit towards the orange right here and paint the highlights and repeat the same steps for the rest of the character. Okay, now we can play with color corrections. For example, I want to change a little bit saturation on this highlighted area. Open the adjustment window and this time do not check the colorize box because we want to only change the saturation and the lightness of the layer and not the entire color. You can also do these adjustments for the rest of the character, but I'm not going to do that right now. Now is the time to add more shadows and highlights. So go over to the shadows layer and create a new one above it. So I'm staying in this hard run brush and now let's color pick this dark value right here and create some shadows around the eyes. 
create shadows based on the light direction. For intensity, try to see how it looks more appealing to you. You can use the selection tool and create more interesting shapes with it to indicate the personality of the character more. You can make these sharp shapes for the shadows. Okay, let's do the same thing for the highlights. So go to the highlights layer and create a new one above that. So what I'm gonna do for the highlights, I'm going to color pick this color right here and go even more lighter than it already is. I'm repeating the same process for the highlights, but this time I'm thinking about what parts will be the most exposed to the light. Feel free to adjust the colors on the underneath layer. That's why we separated them in the first place. I added a little bit more saturation to the base layer for my highlights to pop out. And from now on, I'm repeating the same steps for other parts of our character. Color pick the base color of that area and select a darker shade for the shadows or lighter for the highlights. You'll probably need a lot of erasing, but you can use a simple undo shortcut to bring back the previous step. The overall look of your character is also determined by the game's environment and colors. So for example, if you're creating a character monster for the horror game or something like Hollow Knight, you won't use too saturated colors. If the game has simpler textures, you don't need too many details on your character. So have those notes in mind while creating. What I'm showing you in this video is the process of creating, which you can use in any character design despite the style. For the final touches, add the rim light and some specular reflections. This is totally optional, but it creates a really cool effect and helps your subject stand out from the environment. For the rim light, choose the highlight color and with the airbrush or any other brush, paint on the opposite side of the light source. This light is caused by the bounce light or another light source. Everything in this step is your personal preference. You can add that specular reflection if it suits your style, add the darker shadows, adjust the colors or leave it as it is. And with all that being said, your character monster is done. Thank you all for watching. If you find something useful in this video, please make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below and have fun creating. See you in the next video. Bye.